It's time for the Fast Break Basketball Show with your hosts, Wes Cusswood and Ben Davis. Welcome to this week's episode of the Fast Break Basketball Show. The Geelong United basketball community was rocked this week with the news of the sudden passing of NBL1 assistant women's coach Nick Ford. Nick had been a member of the women's team for the past four years and his sudden death sent tremors through the entire basketball community. On Saturday night, both teams wore black armbands to honour Nick and the NBL1 women's team were able to get an 82-47 win over the Knox Raiders, which they dedicated to the memory of Nick. After the game, I caught up with head coach Matthew Payton and player Ella Tofayono on what was a very emotional night, but an emotional win for the girls. Well, I'm here with the head coach of the Hoop City Geelong United Supercats women's team, Matthew Payton. Matthew, an incredible 82-47 win over the Knox Raiders here tonight. Obviously a very emotional game and a very emotional win for the team. What was it like for yourself and for the girls getting together after what's been a very tough couple of days and getting that win over Knox? Uh, I would be lying if I said it was an easy task to, to get focused. Um, I'm very proud of the players and the way that they stayed on task and were able to kind of compartmentalise. Um, but in saying that, I think we, uh, we got through it together by just embracing the moment um, and uh, you know, lifting one another up. And that uh, basically what it came down to, that it was, it was support for, for one another no matter what. And, and fortunately for us, we were able to put a positive um, performance together on the floor. And I think that, that made the, uh, the night easier to swallow. Well, of course, a great win over Knox, but defensively you guys were outstanding, particularly in the third and fourth quarters, keeping Knox to just two points in the first six and a half minutes of both of those quarters and keeping them to 10 and 12 points respectively, and, and again in the fourth quarter. So you seem to start each quarter very strongly coming out of those breaks. It's definitely a focus of ours to, uh, to ensure that coming out of a break uh, we don't give up any momentum, um, and if anything can try and create some. Uh, you know, we will make some adjustments um, both from a, a senior player perspective and uh, and our coaching staff and uh, you know I think from that point of view yeah you, the, the most pleasing thing there is that we were able to stay on task um, and stick with what was working uh, and not variety for variety's sake so um, yeah very pleased for the girls that they were able to um, play consistency for the consistently for the four quarters and uh, and not be overcome by the, by the occasion of well, of course, it is a fantastic win over Knox tonight, but it is a doubleheader weekend and another game followed up tomorrow against Keel or Thunder. And again, you know, the depth of your roster is, is always a little bit of an issue at the moment with Monica still um, being overseas and preparing for Asia Cup tryouts or Asia Cup uh, preparations. Um, but again, how do you manage that in terms of, you know, getting the players on the floor tonight but then having to back it up again tomorrow? Yeah, well, good luck to Monica. I mean, she's, I think, even Canada at the moment playing some friendlies. Um, and touch base with her through the week. You know, it, it's it's going to be tough. Obviously, tonight will be um, you know, a um, quite a crest emotionally that we'll we'll come down from. So our challenge tomorrow is is to make sure that our effort levels and our focus from tonight um, isn't a one-off event, uh, and you know we're able to reset and refocus, um, and you know hopefully you know, continue to to ride that um, that togetherness that we had tonight that uh, I think held us in really good stead when it came to our defensive intensity and um, just our, our ability to communicate um, you know, through stoppages and get stoppages. So uh, Keylor having played tonight as well probably helps. Uh, both teams will be coming off, um, off games and uh, yeah, we'll, we'll head up there hoping to, to finish our work and consolidate our spot, knowing that you know, there's essentially still almost half a season to go. So uh, it's, it's a long way to go and uh, these girls are determined to make their, make their mark. Well, Matt, thanks so much for joining us again. An emotional night, an emotional win. Best of luck tomorrow, and the whole basketball community is thinking of the Ford family and the NBL1 women's team as well. Yeah, thanks, Beth. And, you know, we, again, our, our condolences to the, to the Ford family, and uh, uh, it'd be remiss of me not to say that we, you know, we've had some great communication um, with the, the families and the loved ones, and, um, yeah, it, it's, why we, it's why we play the game, and it, it's what brings us together as a, as a uh, basketball community. So... Our thoughts and prayers uh, to them, and um, yeah, we'll continue to do what we can on the floor. Thanks, Matt. I'm here with Hoop City Geelong United Supercats player Ella Tofayono after a fantastic win over the Knox Raiders tonight. Ella, obviously a very emotional night and an emotional win, but fantastic that you guys were able to get such a big win over Knox tonight. 
Yeah, absolutely. The girls obviously banded together. Um, and honestly, we just wanted to go out there and honor Nick. Uh, we know what he would have expected tonight. And, you know, honestly, we came out and threw the first punch and weren't going anywhere. And, um, yeah, that was, that was definitely for Nick. And I think the rest of our season will be for that, yeah. Absolutely. And, of course, you had some family here in the stands tonight. How uh, special is it for you to be able to have your family come down and watch you play here? Super special. It's been a while since they've been able to watch me play basketball, especially mum. Uh, she hasn't seen me play in seven years. Oh, wow. Yeah, so it's been a long time. Um, so, honestly, and it was a great night to come out. Um, and, you know, the Geelong Arena never fails. So, <laughs> super glad that they got to experience it. Well, uh, you guys have got a break next weekend, of course. You've got a game tomorrow against Keelor, but then the long weekend break. So what will you be planning for that long weekend? Um, honestly, probably going to go watch some footy, some AFL. i got to watch my first AFL game. I grew up in Sydney, so not really, oh. not an AFL game. Well, it's got to be a Cats game, right? <laughs> yeah, maybe. We'll see. No, I'm just kidding. No, I'll go, I'll go support the Cats. But, um, yeah, hopefully catch a footy game, just relax, um, and probably go see some things. Yeah, Victoria is beautiful, um, and I love it here. So we'll go adventure and find something to do so yeah well Ella, thanks for taking the time to chat with us best of luck against kilo tomorrow absolutely thanks guys see you next week well a fantastic win by the nbl1 women's team getting that win over the knox raiders at the geelong arena but it was a different story for our men who went down 79 97 to the knox raiders and after the game i caught up with head coach grant wallace and george blagievich I'm here with the head coach of the Hoop City Geelong United Supercats men's team, Grant Wallace, after a 79-97 loss to the Knox Raiders here at the Geelong Arena. Grant, the team started really strongly coming out with a three-point lead at quarter time, but that second quarter, 17 to 34, is really where the momentum shifted. It did. It was like two halves and a half. Um, and you know, we, we addressed everything we thought in the first quarter and our attention to detail defensively was really good. Held them to a respectable score and then we had no D transition. We were giving up easy shots, open shots. We lost our communication. We just broke down far too many points. And even to leak 97 points for the game, it's just not what we want to try and do. So, uh, yeah, we've got a lot of work to do in quick turnaround and go to Keylaw now. Well, definitely, as you say, 97 points is, is never a, a great thing that you want to do when you're focusing on defense. But even this, the in, in finding ways to score offensively tonight, it just seemed like it wasn't clicking for the team. They're a long athletic group. I mean, they're very deep, um, and they're coached well by Matt Nunn. Um, you could almost say they're the benchmark in some ways. So we've got a lot of work to do to catch up. And they just keep rotating scorers. Um, so uh, we, we lack that. And they did a really good job, I thought, on Gabe and, uh, and George. They did their scout really well. Uh, and our next second and third options weren't there. We, in fact, probably the last couple of plays when we had the, um, our young kids on, we actually ran our offense, I mean, the pressure was off the game, but we got our best looks in offense. Got the ball moving and uh, we looked pretty good there. Well, I guess speaking of that, you guys do have another game coming up tomorrow. So what will the plan be tonight for the guys to rest and recover, to be able to turn around quickly and, and get, try and get back on the winner's list tomorrow against Keelor? It's a really quick turnaround. And uh, Keelor are very similar with a lot of shooters, a lot of scorers, play high at tempo. So uh, we've got to readdress a few things. I mean, if we can play that template of the first quarter, for 40 minutes, we're going to be pretty damn good. Yeah, finding that. Well, of course, a doubleheader weekend this weekend, but then a break next weekend for the Monarchs' birthday long weekend. So, what will the message be to the teams as they take that week's break? Because obviously, you know, it's still another half of the season to go, and, and you do want to keep that momentum going and keep that streak alive, or, or keep that uh, get back on the winners' list and, and keep that momentum going. What will the message be to the team over that break in terms of making sure that they're staying on top of what they need to be doing uh, training-wise? Well, we've got to try and keep the momentum going, but we've dropped the ball a little bit last week in Bendigo and tonight, so we can pick it up again tomorrow. Um, and then Matt McCarthy joins us over King's birthday weekend. So we've got to get him into the rotation and it gives another big presence. So uh, we've been looking forward to Matt joining us for a long time now. Um, so we've got to try and turn that around. We've got Dan and on coming back down here um, the week after. So it's just getting back into what it is. And then a lot of double weekends. So it'll be a chance to refresh um, but we just got to find a way and that's uh, tonight the first quarter again is what we want to play. Well Graham thanks for joining us as you say we do look forward to seeing everybody back here at the Geelong Arena on Saturday June 17th as the team takes on Danny Nong. Best of luck against Keelor tomorrow. Thank you. Well I'm here with George Blagojevich after a tough loss to the Knox Raiders here at the Geelong Arena. 
George, it just seemed like you guys couldn't click offensively, particularly in that second quarter where Knox seemed to run away with the game a little bit. Yeah, uh, I think it was definitely in that second quarter that got us. Um, yeah, just, I don't know, just killed our rhythm. Um, we just never got going after that. Um, we've got to look at finding some better shots and, and also playing some defense. We, our defense killed us. When we play good D, we can run and get good shots. So, um, yeah, back to, back to the drawing board for tomorrow and hopefully we can bounce back. I guess the good thing about a doubleheader weekend is that although it's a loss tonight, there's another opportunity to turn it around tomorrow. What will you guys be working on? I know it's a short turnaround, but what will you be thinking about and, and working on to face Keylor tomorrow uh, at 3 o'clock? Yeah, I think, again, just defence. We've got to lock down. Um, I think they're 97 points. So, again, yeah, we, not, we lock down on D, we run. Uh, I think that's how we play our best basketball. So if we can do that tomorrow, we should be okay. But, yeah, we've we got, we got to figure something out on that end. Well, best of luck tomorrow, George. Hoping you guys can get back on the winner's list. Thank you very much. Thanks, Thanks guys. Well, it's a win for the women on Saturday night, but a loss for the men. But let's check out how our teams fared against Keelor Thunder in the second game of their doubleheader on Sunday afternoon. Well, it was another split result for our NBL1 teams on Sunday afternoon. The women managing to get the win over Keelor to go 2-0 for the weekend, but the men falling agonisingly short in overtime against Keelor to go 0-2 for the weekend. In the women's game, Geelong defeated Keelor 77-66. Chantelle Horvat finished with 29 points and 10 rebounds. Agnieszka Scoble had 22 points, 4 rebounds, 5 assists and 4 steals, while Sarah Ellsworthy added 11 points, 6 rebounds, 3 assists and 3 steals. In the men's game, as we mentioned, it was a tough loss in overtime going down 104 to 106. Gabe Hadley finished with 29 points, George Blagojevich with 22 points, 15 rebounds, 4 assists and 3 steals. Demarcus Gatlin had 18 points, 10 rebounds, 6 assists and 3 steals. Well, as well as our NBL One South teams having games this past weekend, our Big V Youth League teams were in action. Let's check out how they fared over the weekend. Well, it was a good win by the Geelong United Youth League men as they defeated the Bulleen Boomers by just one point on Sunday afternoon. 76-75 the final score. Marach Marach finished with 21 points and 9 rebounds. Max Alakis 15 points and 11 rebounds. Bailey Bruce 9 points and 5 rebounds. Unfortunately, it was another two losses for the Geelong United Youth League 1 women's team. They played the curtain raiser game on Saturday afternoon, the 3 p.m. time slot at the Geelong Arena and lost to the McKinnon Cougars 59 to 82. Annie Poon finished with 15 points. Georgia Cox had 11 points and five rebounds. On Sunday afternoon, they backed it up with a game against the Bulleen Boomers, losing that one 57 to 105. Cassidy Green, the only player to score in double figures, finishing with 20 points and 14 rebounds. Caleb Blasco had eight points and seven rebounds. What's well, always special when family comes to town and especially for Nick Velasquez, his mum Debbie coming all the way from Hawaii to watch him play here at the Geelong Arena on Saturday night. After the game I had an opportunity to catch up with Nick and Debbie and chat about her time in Australia so far. Well, I'm here with Nick Velasquez and his mum, Debbie. Uh, Debbie, welcome to Australia. I know it wasn't wasn't a great result for the team tonight, but don't you love coming out to watch your son play? I do. It was a wonderful game. Whether they won or lost, they played hard. And what have, you, what have you done so far while you've been here in Australia visiting Nick? Well, I went to the 12 Apostles and I went to the Ocean Road yep. and we went to... Um, uh, we went to Nara. Oh yeah, so you, saw, so you yeah. went and saw some, some kangaroos and some, some emus? Yeah. yeah, but I wanted to see the wildlife kangaroos. I didn't see any. Well, you don't want to get too close to those ones because they'll box you, you know. Oh. That, yeah. <laughs> I don't want that. So, so tell me a little bit about Nick growing up and how he um, got into basketball and, um, and how you guys supported him in his journey to becoming here to Australia. Oh wow, Nick has always been into basketball since a little kid. And I, I would, we were, me and him were in the park, and I was throwing the balls to him, and he was throwing them up, and and I made him practice 53 throws every every day. 53 that throws. Was at, that was at 6 a.m. too. At 6 o'clock <laughs> in the morning. Yeah, that was 6 a.m. Yeah. 
at the school. I was, yeah. Well, look at this. It's all worth it now. Look where you are now, playing That's here right. in Australia and for the Geelong it. United Supercats. Well, Debbie, thank you so much for joining thank us. I hope that you enjoy your time here in Australia with Nick. And hopefully tomorrow the boys can get a win so I'm you can uh, see them get a win today I'm as well. I'm hoping. I, I, I am hoping, yes. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Well, that's it from the Fast Break Basketball Show for this week. Of course, our thoughts and prayers going out to everyone at the Ford family and the whole basketball community. A break this weekend for the long weekend with no basketball on, but plenty of our junior teams heading to tournaments this weekend. So best of luck to all of our Geelong United teams playing in tournaments this long weekend.